Well, it looks like the first snapshot for 1.15 is out and I did not expect them to add a bug on purpose. Yeah, that, that was kind of bad. Oh, that, there's one of them. <laughs> bees, bees have been added to the new snapshot 19w34a. We're going to take a detailed deep dive into the snapshot, so stay tuned and let's begin. Disclaimer, I am human. Humans make mistakes. I tried my best. If there are any mistakes or misunderstandings, I am sorry. So the major thing about this snapshot is bees. A new little bug here has been added into the game as well as a couple of new blocks and items that we will be taking a look at today. Don't mind the, piss, the, the dispenser there that is just me have prepared some stuff for this video. But let us take a look at the bee itself. Of course they have added this bee spawn egg obviously so you can spawn in the mob. And here you go, here's the bee with its um, very I gotta say, a very, very cute face here. They have five hearts, they spawn in plains, sunflower plains, and flower forests. Well, they don't just spawn around, there is a bee nest around here, which is one of these. We will get into more detail with those later on. But that is how they spawn, they spawn in groups around bee nests hanging from trees. And again, the bee nests we will get into in a little bit. Bees fly around and are attracted by flowers, as you can see this one, if we just Put that guy in here. Oh, he sees a flower and he goes to it. After circling a flower for a little while, a bee can collect pollen, just like you saw the other guy did. There we go. When they have collected pollen, their skin changes. As you can see, they have these um, spots on the back, and I think, yeah, they even have a f have a few on their face as well. And they actually drop those particles as well. And when a bee has pollen, they actually have a chance to pollinate crops when they fly over, advancing the crop to another growth stage. Similar to bone meal. This can only happen a few times, so when they have pollen. Also a thing I forgot to mention, when the, pol the pollination thing, when it drops and acts kind of like bone meal, yeah, that will work for berry, berry bushes as well. When a bee that has pollen enters the nest, it will stay in there for at least 2400 ticks, aka 2 minutes, before coming back out. Once a bee leaves the hive or nest, it will increase the honey level by one. More on the nest and hives later. Yes, they are two different things. In fact, this is the hive, that is the nest. Keep in mind that when a bee enters and leaves the nest, they will keep their data such as name, health, etc. And yes, you can actually name these cute little guys. The bees return to their nest slash hive in rain and nightfall and after entering the pollinated state. And despite them being arthropods in real life, bees are not considered arthropods in Minecraft and do not take increased damage against the bane of arthropods enchantment. Now these guys look very cute as such and they very much are unless they are provoked, kind of like wolves and zombie pigmen. They will um, then, well, attack you and their eyes will turn red and they will actually swarm towards you. Their attack deals on easy mode 1 heart of damage, on normal mode 1 heart of damage, on hard mode 1.5 hearts of damage and they will deal poisoned food to you. In normal mode 10 seconds of poison and hard mode 18 seconds. They can only attack, uh, attack? They can only attack once and their stinger on the back of them will actually go away and they will die after 50 or 60 seconds. So I hate to do this, but I must demonstrate the bee when it becomes angered. All bees nearby are angered when one individual is attacked, so be careful. And they also get angry when a nest or a hive is destroyed. I'm not too sure about the hive, but we will have to take a look at that in a little bit once we start talking about the hive and the nests in a bit more detail. But let me just get into uh, survival mode here. Also, it should be said that collecting honeycombs or a honey bottle, the two new items added as well from a nest or hive, will cause the bees from that nest or hive to leave and swarm you. I'm not sure that the bees around you will attack as well. Again, we will have to test that in a little bit. So, we have four bees here around us. I'm gonna smack one of them. And as you can see, all of them turn their eyes red and they all come towards me just like a angry pack of wolves. Oh dear, oh dear me, oh dear me. Okay, I'm gonna let this guy sting me and as you can see, one heart of damage and it lost its stinger there, if you can see it behind it, and it will die after 50 to 60 seconds. And as you can see, it dealt some poison for me and this guy will die 
very shortly. It should be noted that the bees don't attack in um, peaceful difficulty. And as you can see, this guy just became non-angry. They stay angry for around 55 seconds. They have an anger tag, which is defaults to zero. When a bee is attacked, the tag is set to around 700 ticks, and 700 ticks is 35 seconds. So they stay angry for about that that long. Of course, it should be said that the bees don't do any damage if they have already lost a stinger. Though sometimes it can look like they are attacking you. Let me actually just show you this. So it will attack me again, and if I come close to it, as you can see, it looks like it's attacking, but it actually can't do me any damage because it already lost its stinger there. Also, it should be noted that to prevent what I said earlier when you harvest the honey or honeycombs, you can place a campfire below the hive or nest. Again, more on this later, I just want to say it right now. Um, to prevent them from being angry when you do that, but I'll go into more detail with that in a bit. As you can see, that bee just died. It had lost its stinger, so it died as a result. So don't don't hit the bees. You don't really have a reason to. They're cute. And uh, yeah, to be honest, it's for your own good. Now, I have spawned in a few more bees here to show you some more stuff. Breeding. Yes, you can actually breed these guys. Let me grab a flower here. One thing, though, when you hold a flower, they will pretty much follow you around, as you can see here. And if you stand still, they will actually land around you if... Yep, there we go. Yeah, it looks a little bit glitched, but again, it is a snapshot, so they're working on it. If you have a flower and you right-click one of these guys, like so, they will go into love mode and they will do their thing. And you will get the advancement, the parrots and the bats, and you will get a little baby bee. He's so cute. It should be said that you can even use wither roses. To, to breed them. Yes, that, um, yeah, that's a thing. One thing I have not tested is if bigger flowers, the tall ones, if they will work or not. I did see some other big flowers over here, so I do think we will have to try this as an experiment. Let me just see if I can find a bee here. Let's see this guy. Yes, bigger flowers can be used. I just used a peony on that guy. Let's see if we can uh, spawn another one in here. A couple others. Rose, yep. Lilac, yep. That, the big flowers can also be used to breed them. That's nice. Once bees have bred, they, they will have to wait five minutes before they can breed again. Baby bees take 20 minutes, AKA 24,000 game ticks to grow up. The growth of the baby can be sped up by using flowers. So if I just right click on this guy, as you can see the green particles there, each use reduces the remaining time by 10. Can big flowers work? As you can see, the big flowers do not attract the bees whatsoever. It is only the small flowers here. Now I'm interested if the wither rose will also, um, also attract them. Where is the baby bee? Ah, he's right in front of me. Well, this, okay, so the wither rose also attracts them and can also be used to speed up the breeding. Now, can the bigger flowers, yes, the bigger flowers can also be used to increase the growth. Okay, good to know. Then we have some miscellaneous information about the bees. They can be leashed even when angered and being killed by a bee sting results in a new death message that says player was stung to death. So I'm actually going to grab a bee spawn egg, jump into my little jar here that I was actually gonna use for, well, showcase purposes, but um, I'm gonna be a stupid and kill myself just doing this. So yeah, as you can see there, oh dear, let's just respawn. As you can see right there, Binary Vigilante was stung to death. Yes, not pleasant whatsoever. Um, where were I? Two other things that I will quickly want to mention about the bee before we go to the next thing. They will actually try and pollinate wither roses, despite the fact that they are harmed by the wither rose effect they give. So, if I just get a bee here and spawn literally right on the wither rose, as you can see, it is circling around the wither rose and also kills it. Yeah, not 
too smart. And the last very simple thing, if a bee does not have a home nest, it will wander until it finds one. And that is pretty much the stuff about the bees. I'm just gonna let these guys out here because they're all pollinated and we might need all of that um, pollen. We might even need to put another bee nest for these guys over here by the tree and maybe this one as well because we will need some honey for some testing. Anyways, let us move on to the natural generated bee home, the bee nest. They spawn in trees and flower forest plains and sunflower plains. Every tree in these biomes has a 10% chance to have a bee nest during world generation. Also, bee nest has a 10% chance of generating on the trunk of a tree when a sapling grows in the previously mentioned biome. So if I take a sapling, a sappy sapling here and some bone bone meal right here and grow it, there is a 10% chance that a bee nest will actually spawn on it. Now the chance of me actually being able to show this will probably not be that high. Okay, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I have been spamming down saplings for a very long time to try and find a tree where a bee nest was generated naturally. Um, but I do not seem to have gotten any nests whatsoever in any of the saplings that I have put and I'm pretty sure I have put quite a lot. Now it could just be me just not getting one or something else, but I have not gotten a single one so far from what I've seen. So yeah, yeah, I will just have to assume that I'm just not doing very well today. <laughs> But uh, yeah, 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 that's gonna be my uh, conclusion. Either that or a bug. Now, obtaining bee nests can be mined with any tool, even with the hand. I will have to, uh, let me actually just get a bee nest here, over here for demonstration purposes. Let's put it way over here. There we go. Put a bunch of them down. There, there we go. They can be mined with any tools, even your hands, as you can see, they break kind of fast. Though if you just break it, yeah, you get nothing. You will need to use a silk touch tool, like I have this silk touch pickaxe here. Do note though that they do break a lot faster with an axe. So yeah, that is the way that you actually get these things. Do remember though that if there are bees associated with the bee nest that you break, then they will become hostile towards you. One thing I am not sure of though, is if the bees will remain inside the nest, they should with the hive. So let me just try and break that. I broke this thing, there should be a bee in this. And will, and also I don't know if they will become angry at you once you place it back down. Okay, they're all good. Let's place this down. It still has full of honey as you can see because we use silk touch. If I just broke it, I would get nothing. And I just want to see if a bee comes out of this thing. There we go, one just came out and I'm pretty sure if we just break this, yep, there was another one in there. Okay, good. So when you break it with silk touch, it apparently keeps the honey level and it, oh dear, it also, um, yeah, it also keeps the bee inside of it, so that is very nice to know. Let's take a closer look at this thing, shall we? Pollinated bees will fly into the hive and start working. They will stay in there for two minutes, and when they exit the nest, the honey level will increase by one. The nest has five honey levels, and when it has reached level five, the texture will change, and it will have dripping honey particles, just like this one, and as you can see, this one doesn't. You can harvest either honey or honeycombs. You harvest the honey by right clicking with a bottle. So let us get a bottle. There we go. Just get one bottle here. Go into survival mode and make them angry. Yeah. The bees around you will not become angry only if there is one actually inside of it. But as you can see, we now have a honey bottle. Now you can also harvest honeycombs by right clicking the, um, the nest up there with a shear and it will drop three honeycombs for you. As you can see, the bees did not become angry. No bee was in there, so they didn't get irritated because it did that. More information about the honey bottle and the honeycomb in a little bit. Now, as you saw before, when I took some honey out of the other one, the bee inside of it became pretty angry. Though 
right now we have a campfire under here with smoke so once i take it you saw those bees pop out obviously and the bees were not angered by it that is because of the smoke particles coming from the campfire so you can use the campfire to smoke the nest and make them not angry once you take the honey this also works when sharing them for honeycombs as you saw before you don't have to put the campfire exactly under the nest it can be it just has to be the smoke particles from my testing that makes this doable so as long as the smoke particles hit like that then um yeah you should be good now one final thing about these nests that is that they cannot be moved by pistons all right it is time for the beehive so beehives can be mined with anything so if we just put one here and uh, go into survival here we go it can be mined with anything and if we just break it like that we obviously get it back we can use a pickaxe if we so wanted to but an axe is faster as you can see and they all become angry i think they might have designated it as a home and i made them all angry so yeah now if you break this with silk touch the bees will remain inside otherwise they will come out of the hive and swarm you unless a campfire is put down and i assume it is still the same thing where the smoke just needs to hit it and i will also assume that the honey level remains the same because everything about the hive is well everything about the nest goes over to the hive as well it is basically just like the nest just crafted with what you can see here so you need six wooden planks and then three honeycombs and if i just get a crafting table out here you will see that putting wood like so and the honeycomb like so will give you a beehive now you could use any any sort of plank let's use one dark oak you can mix and match whatever you so choose if you have a lot of spare wood around and don't want to keep it all laying around you can do that if you want you can use birch you can mix them you can max match them whatever you want to do it all counts and no they cannot be moved by pistons nor do sticky pistons well retract them sticky pistons doesn't work on nests either by the way now we are on to some of the easier stuff the honey bottle you already know how to get a honey bottle i showed you that and well you can actually drink this so as you can see i'm a little bit hungry i'm missing four of my meat pups sticks whatever you want to call them as you can see i'm missing four whatever you want to call them and can be drunk by holding right click and it restores three of those and 9.6 saturation you can also use it to make three sugar and you get the glass bottle back of course the honeycombs i showed you you can get them by sharing a hive or nest it will drop three honeycombs and their usage well you make beehives and so far nothing else now we have a couple of miscellaneous and more technical um, details in the snapshot. For example, we do added particles, dripping honey, falling honey, and falling nectar, and landing honey. In loot tables stuff, we have a new function, copy state, copies state properties from dropped block to block state tag in dropped item. New parameters are block and properties. Blocks is source of properties block ID. Properties, list of property names, all must be present on block. And then we have some general changes. We have a new language added, which is Yiddish. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Then we have some newly added tags. They have added Minecraft bee growables, Minecraft beehives, Minecraft crafts, Minecraft flowers, Minecraft tall flowers. Those are the new block tags. And then they have added Minecraft flowers and Minecraft tall flowers item tags. And then textures, obviously all this new stuff. Plus they have added textures for wax blocks and crystallized honey item. These are currently not obtainable in game. Then we have some interesting changes with the dispensers actually, which is why you saw the dispensers laying around here. For example, this one. They can now har harvest honeycombs, honey bottles and water bottles. Um, when dispensing glass bottles or dispensing shears on the bee nest or hive or water. So right now we have a water source here with a dispenser with a glass bottle and a lever. If we flick it, it fills up the water bottle and fills up another one. And now it spits out one, I guess because it's random. And there we go, three water bottles. Now this can, of course, work for the 
beehives slash nests as well. So I think I found a bug and I want to see if I can replicate it again. And we have a wandering trader, of course. They are so annoying. Ah, oh, yes, that has been taken care of. Peace of quiet. Okay, so we have a dispenser here with some glass bottles, and then we have an empty hide. Hive. Hive nesting. And I want to see. Yeah, that's a bug. So this is obviously empty. We can even flick it f like f 5 million times. As you can see, let's just flick it even more, just like so. As you can see, we are way past the honey f level 5. And, oh, there we go, a sixth honey bottle. And as you can see, no bee has entered, so there's no chance that the honey level in this thing advanced. And even if it did, it still should not be able to obtain any honey from this nest because it is not at honey level 5. But as you can see, I can just keep clicking and clicking and clicking and clicking. And I keep getting honey, which is obviously not something that should happen. So that is a bug. Hopefully they will fix very soon. Now I just really quickly wanted to show you with the shears. So if I just do this, put a lever here and put a shears in here and do that, as you can see, it drops the honeycombs everywhere. So as you can see, that worked too, though that do not work a second time. Like the um, water bottle one. We can even try placing it in another direction and do that and put the shears over here and Nope, doesn't work. Only once, which is how it should work. Now we have something a little bit redstone-y. Redstone comparators cannot detect how much honey is inside the beehives or bee nests. Like so. And as you can see, okay, I'm gonna get rid of my jar now because I need the space to work on. But if I just place down five redstone here, this... Um, Nest here has a honey level of 5, so as you can see it goes on to redstone output of 5. The signal strength is of 5, sorry, but if I put a 6th down, it is dead. And yeah, I think that is quite interesting. You can use that as an indicator to say, hey, this is almost full. This is not getting any full anytime soon. This one is almost there. This one is full. This one is full. And yeah, I think you get the idea. Now, what I was not able in my testing to get this honey level from a hive and I couldn't get the bees to go inside the hive either well sorry they did go into it but I it the honey level just didn't go up like the either that or the either the comparator didn't work on the beehive or the beehive just didn't work and my conclusion was that the honey did not get stored in the beehive because in a moment these bees will pop out and you will be able to see it but um the level was not going up plus they were going in and out of it so many times that the honey level should be at five so i'm guessing that it's a bug i'm gonna wait here for a little bit and see what happens once they exit all right the bees just exited these two guys here and as you can see the level has not gone up whatsoever, even though it should be now at 3. So I am guessing that that is a bug, that the hive is not storing its honey level. So yeah. Also if it wasn't clear when using a shear and a dispenser on a nest slash hive, the honeycomb will fly well everywhere or drop to the ground. It will not get picked up by the dispenser automatically like the bottles. And then the final general change in the game library updates is that Minecraft now requires OpenGL 2.0. And then we have 20 issues fixed from releases from the released versions before 1.15. There's so many and so long, so I'm just going to put them on the screen right now. You can read them, pause the video, read them, blah 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 blah, expanding time and buying time. Okay, that's about it. But yes, that's gonna do it for this snapshot. I hope you enjoyed. If I missed something, could have gone into detail in something, and if I did anything wrong or have misunderstood something, be sure to let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, yeah, hope to see you next time and in the next snapshot deep dive i i'm not sure what to go what to call them deep walkthrough detailed walkthrough detailed snapshot walkthrough how about that hope to see you in the next one have a wonderful day goodbye <laughs>